What's up developers, it's Dari here and welcome back to a new video where we're going to talk about events in Laravel. Quick pause, do you want to support the channel and want me to continue on pushing content? Well, you can support the channel through Patreon right now. You will also get benefits such as a private Discord group where everyone is helping each other out with their coding issues. So if you are interested to join, the link will be in the description down below. In the last video, which I will link down below, we've talked about how to use jobs and queues in Laravel. Let's rewind. A job is basically a trigger that will tell your application that something needs to be done. But what if you want to be triggered whenever something has happened? That's when you will be using events. Events are basically notifications that something has taken place. Let's say that you have an input field where a user needs to enter his email and he can submit it by clicking on the submit button to subscribe to your newsletter. You basically want to get notified, right? Therefore, you can use events. Every developer has worked with events before, even if you're not aware of it, since some events are even triggered by the framework itself. Whenever you make use of, let's say, eloquent models, you're basically going to trigger an event to create, read, update, or delete something. Before we dive into the code to fire an event, let's actually create a static page where we're asking for an email address of a user and a submit button. And once again, using my GitHub repository, which is a static Laravel project with Tailwind included. First thing that we need to do is to change our endpoint because I don't want to work with a page like this. Let's navigate to the CLI because we need a controller to process the view. So in here, let's generate a new controller by performing PHP artisan make colon controller space, a file called news letter controller. Let's hit enter. Let's navigate back to Visual Studio Code. Let's open our app folder, HTTP controllers, where our newsletter controller will be located. Now let me actually zoom in. Today's video is brought to you by Cloudways, a managed hosting platform for your applications. Cloudways has enabled businesses to scale and reach new milestones instead of worrying about server hassles. With reliable 24 seven support, Cloudways offers complete peace of mind from server level nightmares. Furthermore, its superior tools and works enhance your productivity so you can focus on creating incredible experiences with your applications. It's a fast managed solution for agencies, SMBs and e-commerce businesses. What I personally like about Cloudways is their slogan, moving dreams forward. We do need to set up a new method right here, which will basically return the view to our index. So let's create a new method called public function index. And we're basically going to return a view with in single quotes, a name of index. There are two more things that we need to do. We obviously need to create the index.blade.php file and we need to set up the route. So let's start off with the index.php file. Let's open resources, views, and right here, we're going to create a new file called index.blade.php. And let's just write down newsletter to double check it. But before we can test it out in the browser, we need to define our route inside the routes folder, the web.php file. Let's get rid of the route that we have and let's create a new one called route colon colon get, which accepts two params. The first one is the endpoint. So in single quotes, forward slash, comma, brackets, the controller that we want to associate it with, so newsletter controller, colon colon class, comma, in single quotes, the method, which is index. If we save it and navigate to the browser, refresh it, you'll see that the method does not exist, so I probably haven't saved the file. Let's test it again. All right, my bad. Newsletter has been printed out. So let's navigate back to design our index page real quick with Tailwind. Like I've said, I've already implemented Tailwind in this project. So let's go to our index.blade, remove newsletter. First things first, let's write down doc and hit tab to get our HTML template. Now inside the head tag, we do need to link our Tailwind CSS file. So right below the title, let's write down link, hit tab. Inside the href, let's add a double set of curly braces. We're going to call the mix function, which will look inside the public folder where our CSS file is located in single quotes, CSS forward slash app dot CSS. I don't like to work with ugly designs, so let's quickly build something that looks pretty nice. Inside our body tag, let's add a class right there of bg gray 200. The width is dash full, the height is full, and the font is dash sans. 
let's go inside our body and create a new div, which will be our parent element that needs a class of flex and age dash screen. Then in here, we're going to create a child element, which is also a div. And we're going to add a class of M dash auto. Inside our child element, we can create an H1 with the name of newsletter. I mean the text of newsletter, excuse me. And let's add a class of text dash center. The PB is 12, so the padding bottom. The text is 2XL and the font is bold. Now let's save it and let's go to the browser to double check it. All right, it's nothing fancy. Below our H1, let's create a form with a action to forward slash subscribe. And we need to add a method, which is post. Inside our form, let's add a CSRF token. So a cross site request forgery token. And right below, we need one input field with a type of text. And let me actually align this on the line below. All right, let's give it a name of email. It has a placeholder of enter email. And right below our placeholder, we need to add a class of PX is four. The PY is two. We have a shadow XL. We have rounded XL. The placeholder dash gray dash 50 is column column placeholder. If we save it and test it out inside the browser, you'll see a pretty good looking input field, even though it's coming from me, but we still need to add a button. So right below our input field, let's add a button, give it a class of BG-Blue-500. The hover will change the color to BG-Blue-700. The text is white, the font is bold, PY is two, PX is four, the margin left is four, and it's rounded dash full. Now we obviously need to add a type, which is submit. Inside the button, let's add the text of submit. All right, I can work with this. As we have defined in the action of our form right here, we're going to call the subscribe method. So let's define our route first and then move on to the controller. So if we open our web.php file right below our first route, define a new route, colon, colon, post. We're not going to get something, but we're going to post something. The endpoint will be forward slash subscribe. And then we're going to add a comma brackets and we're going to call the newsletter controller, call it, call it class, comma method is subscribe. There's actually one step that we have forgot and that's adding our migration because we do need to save the email address of a user inside the database. So let's navigate to the CLI. Let's perform a PHP artisan make a migration called newsletter. Hit enter. All right, our migration has been created. Let's navigate back to Visual Studio Code. Open the database folder, migration, and it's the last one. It is a class of newsletter. So inside the up method, let's create a schema, colon, colon, create. Inside the create method, we're going to define the table name, which will be newsletter, comma, function, parentheses. Inside the function, we do need to pass in the blueprint variable table. And inside the schema, we have our table ID. We have our table string, which is the email. And the last one is the table timestamps. Save it, close off the file because we're done with it, but we do need to migrate it. Inside the CLI, let's perform a PHP artisan migrate. As you could see, our migration has been created. So let's actually test it out. Let's go to MySQL and let's say use Laravel underscore DB. Let's desk newsletter. As you could see, our ID email created at and updated at have all been created. Now the next step is to navigate to our newsletter controller and do something with the method that we have mentioned inside our web.php file. So if we go to our newsletter controller, Right below our public function index, create a new public function called subscribe. Now, just like the jobs, controllers, migrations, models, and you can go on, we can create an event through the CLI by performing the PHP artisan command again. So let's navigate to the CLI. Let me navigate to the other tab and let's say PHP artisan make me an event called user subscribed. 
What this command will do is basically creating a new folder inside the app folder. Let me show it to you. Right here called events. And if we open it, you'll see a user subscribed file in here. Next to the event, there's one more file that we need to add, which I haven't mentioned up until this point, which is a listener. It's not necessary to have one, but I prefer to work with a listener as well. Since if someone subscribes to your newsletter, you do somehow want to notify them that the user has subscribed, right? You want to return something back to the user. And that's what you can do with a listener. So let's navigate to the CLI one more time. Let's perform a PHP artisan make me a listener called email owner about subscription. Hit enter. Our listener has been created. But before we can use our listener and event, we do need to register it. But I want to wait and do that at the end of the video so you can see what will happen if we don't register it. We won't be focusing on the listener right now, but we will start with the event. So let's open it. This file has something that you'll see throughout most of the files, such as a namespace, some use statements, a class name, and some traits right here. What the dispatchable trait will do is basically give it a method to dispatch itself. A trait that we haven't seen before is interacts with sockets. And what this basically will do is broadcast with the broadcast on method that we have down here. And I think that I have mentioned serialized models quite a lot on this channel, so I won't dive into it again. The goal is that this file, the user subscribed, lets us know if an event has happened. In our case, a user will subscribe with their email address. So we obviously need to do something with the email that is being passed in. Right above our constructor and right below our traits, let's create a property, public email. What we then can do inside our constructor is obviously pass it in as a param, so email we do need to do something with the object that will represent the event. So in our case, we need to say that this email is equal to variable email. So the email property. Now the next step is to do something inside our controller and specifically doing something with the event that we just created. So let's save it, navigate to the newsletter controller. Now before we do something, I usually like to add a DD here to see if everything works fine. So let's go back to the browser. So test at gmail.com, click on submit. And as you could see, okay has been printed out. Now let's navigate back to Visual Studio Code. Let's open our newsletter controller, remove the DD. And the first thing that we need to do is to validate our request. And I want to mention it one more time that you should never forget that you're working on saving data in the database, even though it's a simple input field that we have. Before we can validate it, we do need to pass it in inside the param, so request variable request. Then inside our method, we could basically say that, well, get me the object, validate it, and let's pass in a set of brackets right here. We're going to work with a key value pair, so the key will be email, and the value will be required, pipe, unique, colon, the table, so newsletter, comma, the column, which will be email. Now there are multiple ways on how you could handle or fire an event. I prefer to use the event method. So let's define that right below our request validate. Let's say event parentheses, semicolon. Inside the event method, we're going to pass in a object of the user subscribed. So a new user subscribed. What we have set inside the controller is that the user subscribed does need to receive an email. So what we could do is to say, get me the request, input, email. We're basically passing in the email that we're getting from the input field. What we could do then right below our event is to basically say, well, return me back to the screen. If we save it, navigate to the browser, refresh the page, enter the test at Gmail email again, hit subscribe. You'll see that the page will be refreshed but nothing in particular has happened since we haven't defined anything that needs to happen when a user subscribes. That's the thing that we need to do with the listener. If we navigate back to Visual Studio Code and open our listener folder, where we have our email owner about subscription class, scroll down to the handle method because the rest is actually not something that we need right there. Now what the handle method basically will do is expecting an event. And in our case, it will be the user subscribed. So right below variable event, let's say user subscribed, 
hit enter, save it. All right, let's remove the comment because we need to do two things right here. We need to save the email inside the database and we also need to send the user that just registered a confirmation that they have been registered. I'm not going to use Eloquent right here, but just a database query. And in order to do that, we need to call the DB, colon, colon, table. Well, the table name is obviously newsletter. I've got an error right here because we need to import the fake gate. All right. Right below my table method, we're going to chain another method called insert. Let's go inside our insert method, add brackets and hit enter. We're going to add a key value right here again. The key will in single quotes be email and the value will be grabbed from the event email. Now that was it for the query, which was pretty simple. Then if we go right below our query, we're going to call the mail vacate. So let's pull it in again, call and call in two. The two method accepts one param, which is the receiver, which will be variable event email. We need to chain one more method here. So let's say sent because we're going to send it to someone. We don't have a mail class, so let's create it first before we continue on. Let's navigate to the CLI. Let's perform a PHP artisan make me a mail command called user subscribed message. Hit enter. Let's navigate back to Visual Studio Code. Let's open our mail folder, user subscribed message. Scroll down to the build method and let's change the view to mail.subscribed. We obviously need to create it, so let's do that as well. Let's open the resource folder, views, create a new folder called mail, which will refer to the mail right here. And then the subscribed.blade.php file needs to be created as well. So let's say subscribed.blade.php. I'm not going to make a complex design right here, so let's add an H1 with the text of user has subscribed. Save it, close off the file. We don't need our mail as well, so save it again, close it off. Inside the send method of our listener, we're going to pass in the new object of the user subscribed message. If we save it, navigate back to the browser, refresh the page, enter our test at gmail.com email, subscribe. You'll see that we're getting a type of response because the input field has refreshed. Let's navigate to the CLI, to the MySQL tab. Let's select everything from newsletter. You'll see that nothing has been added right here because remember, I've told you in the beginning of the video that we do need to register our event and listener. For that, Laravel comes with a predefined file that we can adjust. If we navigate back to Visual Studio Code, you'll see inside the app folder, there will be a providers folder. And if we open it, you'll see a specific file called event service provider. Let's open it. Obviously this file corresponds with the events that we're working on in this video. Inside the property list that we have right here called listen, we need to define the event and the associated listener. After our registered class, let's hit enter. Let's call the class of our event called user subscribed, colon colon class. And we're going to associate it with a set of brackets. And in here, we're going to call the listener, which will be email owner about subscription, colon colon class. And this should do the work. If we save it, navigate back to the browser. Let me actually open MailTrap. Let me go to my dashboard. And as you can see, my dashboard is empty. So let's refresh my local host. Add an email of test at gmail.com. Let's click on submit. That took one second, which is all right. Let's go to MailTrap. And as you can see, user subscribed message has been received. If we then navigate back to iTerm, let's hit the arrow up to select everything from newsletter again. And as you can see, we have added one new row right here. Now this was it for this video. If you do like my content and you want to see more, leave this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button.